Good afternoon. Parang gusto kong kumanta, no? Kasi nabiti na ako rin sa worship natin kanina, no? Gusto niyo ba akong kumanta? Ay, ayaw, ayaw. Wala well, sumasagot. Okay lang, okay lang. Again, good afternoon everyone. And my name is Richard. I'm one of your pastors here. And welcome to our 5 p.m. service, no? I hope uh, you had a very good merienda time. Pero wag lang kayo matutulog. Kasi medyo malamig ngayon, ano? Pastor James, muulan sa labas. But uh, it's great to be back here and be able to see all of you worship uh, God together. And uh, alam nyo, it's, uh, today no, we'll be sending out one of our very best leaders in, uh, in our movement. Um, Jeff is with us, Jeff T. Pai. Maybe Jeff, you could join me here in front uh, the, on stage. Uh, you probably may not know Jeff, um, but Jeff is one of our most fruitful leaders back in Victory Pioneer, nasa Rob Forum pa tayo. Sino po sa inyo, you were able to join us already since our Rob Forum days. Victory Pioneer. Okay, almost half, no? So, malamang kilala niyo si Jeff. Uh, he worked in BPI, tama, no? For about 10 years. But uh, during the course of time na nagtatrabaho po siya in the banking institution, he already sensed the call of God uh, to, be, to be able to move and uh, obey God in the mission field because he's been serving in our mission field since 2019. In fact, 2018, magkasama kami uh, sa Myanmar. We had our 10 days team there. Uh, we ministered in our church, Every Nation, in Yangon. And uh, from there, God uh, eventually, through the perfect timing of God, he was able to go to school, na train siya, and we were able to send him out in uh, South Asia. Okay, hindi ko na lang babanggitin yung pangalan kasi it's a creative access nation. And after about a year, he was able to move to Central Asia and uh, dun po siya pupunta uli. Babalik siya, no? Kasi he was here for about one month. Tama, no? Mga one month. And babalik po siya ng Tuesday. pag natin si Jeff that the Lord will not just guide him there but at the same time, God would use him to be able to uh, disciple more of our locals in that nation in Central Asia. Hindi ko na lang babanggitin muna for uh, safety reasons at the same time para kung ano man yung ginagawa ni God sa bansang yun, ano, it will continue. So maybe we could stretch our hands to uh, Jeff. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in the life of Jeff. We send him uh, in back into the mission field as he serves in Central Asia. We thank you for the calling that you have placed over his life. Naniniwala kami, marami kayong gagawin through him and even through our team who's already on the ground, Lord God, really discipling and, and reaching out to the locals there. We pray for the grace of God to be upon him. We pray, Father, that God, you would give him good health and even the wisdom on how he could uh, communicate with the people there, especially as he studies the culture and be a student of the language as well. Marami pong salamat. In Jesus' name, and the church would say, Amen and Amen. Palapakan natin si Lord. Jeff, thank you. Praise God. So we're starting a brand new series. Ang title po ng series natin, We, Your People. And our goal is to talk about, basically, and reinforce the importance of church, uh, especially now that we're back on face-to-face. No? Sino sa inyo, you're glad that you're back here. Okay, uh, nakakapag-face-to-face service na tayo. Alam nyo, since the pandemic began in the first quarter of 2020, it's very, it's a challenge, right? Uh, for you, for all of us to just stay inside our house, tama ba? Sino ba sa inyo gusto nyo sa bahay lang tayo, di ba? Nag-Netflix ka lang 10 hours a day. Napakahirap naman nun. Kung, pu- kung puro Korean novela na lang, sisingkit ang mga mata natin. Eh, paano na lang ako? Masingkit na nga mata ko, di ba? So, medyo challenge kung lagi lang tayong nasa bahay. And, you know, when I was looking at the news, scanning the news, actually every day, nagbabasa po ako ng, ng news, no? Um, in the series of lockdowns we had for the last two years, basically, parang na-realize ko may tatlong uh, parang ano, no? masasabi nating after effect yung lockdown sa mga tao, no? Una, 
uh, sinulat ko nga dito, maraming trabaho ang, maraming nawala ng trabaho. Okay? Maybe some of you, you lost your job in the middle of the last two and a half years. Maybe some of you have been engaged in business and somehow your business slowed down. You either had to downsize, you had either had to cut salary of some of your staff or probably nag close down uh, completely no, yung business. Yung iba naman nung naapektuhan uh, is really the fear of getting infected. Okay? Um, I remember in the first, the first time I, I, I went out of the house nung first hard lockdown in April of 2020, pag unang labas ko, syempre walang tao, di ba? Wala, walang tao sa daan, tapos pupunta ako ng Unimart kasi mas malapit kami rito, dito sa may side na to. Pupunta ako ng Unimart, tapos pag may nabahing, alam mo yun, parang uh, kahit na 20 feet away sa'yo, parang feeling mo yung, naku, wahangin dito, baka, baka mahawa ako. Meron ba sa inyo, ganun yung pakiramdam mo? First time mo lumabas after two weeks, tapos para ka napapraning, parang ganun yung pakiramdam, no? But now, uh, yes, people are going out, and we, uh, when you look at the news, syempre, somehow, no, may konting spike in uh, cases, and maybe for some people, that can, that can uh, affect us in a way, no? Kasi medyo kinakabahan ka. Paano kung yung katabi ko, na ubo ng konti, ganyan, di ba? Ito yung isa pang epekto. Finally, yung isa is basically people just stay home. But again, like I mentioned, staying home is not easy, right? Uh, you stay home, obviously, um, it could work for a certain time period, but if you stay home without exercise, without uh, really interaction with people, mas marami siya nagiging problema. Physical health, mental health, I think uh, in the tail end of 2020, um, nagkaroon ng spike in terms of uh, depression and really the emotional challenges that people face during this time of pandemic. And yet, if we look at the Bible closely, the Bible has always talked about the importance of meeting together. Sabi nga sa Hebrews, let us uh, consider how we may spur on one another. And at the same time, sabi nga rin sa Hebrews chapter 10, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing so that we can encourage and build each other up. And that's basically the, what the series is all about. No? Ito yung gusto nating pag-usapan no? for we, your people. Now, let me encourage you to open your Bibles. You could stand with me. Um, and you can open your physical or uh, gadgets, no? Tayo po tayo in reverence to God's Word. And we're going to read several verses in the Gospel of Matthew. Okay, chapter 16. So Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 19. Okay, so that I have a physical Bible here. It says here in verse 13, Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not re revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Verse 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Let's all pray. Lord, as we begin this new series, Holy Spirit, illuminate our minds, our hearts through the Scripture, and allow this truth, Lord God, to be deep, deeply marinated in us, changing us, transforming us, that we may be able to not just acquire Bible facts, but really the transforming work of God to move in our lives. Marami pong salamat. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's all take our seats. Okay, so I think from the name of the book or the gospel, the gospel of Matthew, it was written by Matthew, and he used to be a tax collector. Kung na natin yung background, his other name is Levi. And uh, as a former tax collector, at one point, I think in Matthew chapter 9, he threw a feast no, or a party uh, sa mga kaibigan niyang mga tax collectors. No? And this gesture he did was, it, it somehow, it brought frown on the face of religious leaders of his time because they felt 
why would, why would you, or maybe even Jesus, why would you mingle with sinners? Okay? Yung uh, makasalanan. Bakit mo gusto makasama yung mga yan? Maka-fellowship. And so, ito yung isa sa mga parang distinct, distinctives ni Matthew no, at that time. No? And yet, when you look at it closely, Matthew did not think it odd to, uh, to, to invite his uh, tax collector friends in a party like that because he, would, he wanted his friends to somehow get to know Jesus. Now, the ministry of Jesus was characterized by great crowds. Napakaraming libu-libu lagi ang uh, sumusunod kay Jesus and uh, the crowds would often witness Jesus perform signs and wonders and miracles. Uh, yung mga pilay nakakapaglakad, yung mga bulag nakakakita, yung mga pipi at bingi nakaka, nakakadinig at nakakapagsalita uli. So, nare-restore, no? And yet, as a uh, while he, Jesus does this, he would also perform miracles and he would feed the 5,000, multiplying five loaves of bread and two fish. Now, at this time, Jesus withdrew uh, to a faraway place. Actually, it's about 150 miles north of Jerusalem. So, pumunta siya sa may Caesarea Philippi. And this city was basically uh, a predominantly Gentile city. Okay? So, mar- maraming uh, non-Jews na nakatira dito sa lugar na to. And most likely, what he did was an effort, okay, from the pressing crowds para magkaroon siya ng teaching moment with his disciples. So, kaya sila lumayo. Okay? Now, tingnan natin, ano? Ang tanong kasi, have you ever wondered, dun sa binasa nating text, bakit kaya, uh, why did Jesus had to ask his disciples, who do you, who do you, who do people say the Son of Man is? Okay? Bakit kaya niya tinanong? Was it kind of a survey he did para malaman niya kung gano'n na ba siya kasikat? Kaya gano'n yun, nag-survey siya. Or is it because, siguro naisip niya, naisip pa ni Jesus, marami na kasing mga idol sa lugar na to, titingnan ko kung saan ako nakarank. Ito kaya yung dahilan kung bakit tinanong ni Jesus yung mga tao, eh, lalo na yung mga disciples niya, kung bakit, Kung bakit, ano, sino ba ako, sino ba ako sa tingin mo sa public opinion? Now, pag na natin ang background ng Caesarea Philippi, um, it was affiliated by various religions. Foremost was the worship of Baal. Okay? The worship of Baal is, uh, Baal is a, was a fertility god. And part of worship was sex. Okay? So parang in a casual manner, pag siguro, in that place, imagine ko, siguro pag tinanong yung isang tao, saan ka nang galing? Ito, nag-worship. <laughs> pero, pero yun yung, ano nila, yun yung understanding nila of worship. Now, there is, uh, uh, part, of, part of worship there is uh, sexual orgies. Of course, there are several other gods, foremost of which was the Greek god Pan. Okay? Kasi ang lugar na to, before siya naging Caesarea Philippi, ang pangalan niya Banyas. Okay? from the Greek god Pan, a half-man, half-goat deity, often depicted playing a flute na we know worship din nila. And there were several other gods that were worshipped in, uh, ito na yung modern-day picture, no? Kung saan may mga commemoratives at may mga sinetap sila dyan if you go there in Caesarea Philippi. Now, at that time, Jesus passed by Caesarea Philippi. Philip, the son of Herod the Great, Actually, he renamed the city Caesarea in honor of Augustus Caesar. Now, ang interesting na nangyari dito, as we read through this text, the place where idol worship was common, that's where Jesus first mentioned the word church. Okay, pinili niyang dito sabihin yung uh, katagang church, no? Na gusto nating alamin in a short while. Bakit niya pinili ito? At anong meron? Okay. Based from this text, let me share to you three non-negotiable beliefs that the church share together. Okay? Tatlong non-negotiable beliefs no? that the church share together. Ito gusto natin tignan. Una, Jesus is the founder of the church. Okay? Verse 17 and 18, Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church. Now, before we talk about these two verses, balikan natin saglit yung tanong ni Jesus. Who do people say the Son of Man is? Ito yung tanong niya, di ba? He asked his disciples, and his disciples 
basically gave the public opinion. The prevailing public opinion, sabi ng isang disciple siguro, you know, Jesus, um, some say that you are uh, John the Baptist because you preach with passion, um, you called on people to repent, and somehow they associate, they think you're John the Baptist. Okay? Now, another disciple of his would probably say, well, you're, you're Elijah because like the Old Testament prophet, Okay? You perform so many miracles and signs and wonders because at that time when Elijah was doing all these uh, as a prophet in the nation of Israel, they were in a time of great apostasy. And to perform miracles was somehow a reminder to Israelites at that time that their God is alive. Hindi po siya one of the gods. Okay? And another disciple said, you're Jeremiah because like this man who was also known as the weeping prophet, you have a very soft spot for people. You're so compassionate. Okay? And Jesus could have probably lingered on that discussion and talk about it more. But then, the next question, binigay niya, no? binato niya sa mga disciples siya. Itong sabi niya, sabi niya, uh, but who do you say that I am? Okay? So, kumbaga, okay, I got it. That's the public opinion. But how about you? Yan ang tanong niya sa mga disciples niya, no? You, you see, when Jesus said, Who do you say I am? Okay? He was addressing this question not just to one disciple, but He was addressing it to the rest of His disciples. You know why? Because in reality, it would be important for Him to somehow know what was in the mind of His disciples. We don't know how long His disciples have been hanging with Him, hanging out with Him, or being tagged along, but somehow it would be interesting probably for Jesus to know, ano kaya ni sa isip ng mga disciples ko? Kung sino ba, kilala ba nila talaga ako? So kaya niya tinanong to, no? And I think for us, no, if we're gonna ask the question, para sa'yo, sino ba si Jesus? Okay? Every time you come on a Sunday, who's Jesus for you? Every time Monday steps in, you go back to office, you do your business, you go to school, especially mag face to face classes na para sa you, sino ba si Jesus? Okay? Is he just a good provider? Is he your healer because you're kind of afraid of COVID or to get sick? Is he uh, someone who would encourage you when you're down? Okay, these are all great, and God can do that. But I believe there's more. And Jesus wants to communicate something more to all of us. No? And when you look at this closely, Simon Peter, nag-volunteer siya. He replied. And he said in verse 16, You are the Christ, meaning the Messiah, the Savior, the Son of the living God, not one of the many. Kasi maraming ang Diyos Diyosan sa Caesarea Philippi but Peter was able to zero in on one thing. Jesus, you're the Savior, and you're the Son of the living God. And that's where Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon Bar of Jonah, Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but by my Father who is in heaven. You see, apart from a, re- a revelation from God the Father, Peter would not have given such a very clear response to Jesus. And then in verse 18, Jesus said, I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church. Now, mag-focus tayo sa glit, sa salitang rock. No? Um, I think if you follow theology closely, this could be uh, some kind of uh, ng, uh, questions and some controversies in the past Sino ba, sino ba daw yung rock na tinutukoy ni Jesus? You see, for the Jews who are well-versed in the Old Testament, they know that the rock okay, is distinctive and describes God since the Old Testament days. Pag tinignan natin ang Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 4, and this was Moses saying, He is the rock and His work is perfect. Okay? Now, in the book of Psalm, one psalm is said in Psalm 18, verse 2, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. And then in the same chapter, verse 31, who is God but the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? Okay? And when we look at the Greek words that Matthew used in 
uh, Matthew 16, uh, verse 18, he wrote, You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. You see, when I look at the original Greek na wording na ginamit dito, Peter means a pebble or a small rock. Malita ba to, no? While the Greek word rock is a boulder or a huge mass of rock. Now, I remember many years back, when, my, when our kids were still small, um, we, my wife and I drove to Binangonan Rizal. Meron ba taga Binangonan Rizal dito? Okay, wala. Mga taga Pasig yata kayo. No? Ayun, meron dun sa dulo. No? Makat kami, uh, nag-drive kami pa uh, in, in part of the mountain kasi we were praying and looking for a, a property na we could, feel, we, we could invest. No? And meron kami napuntahang isang lugar sa may Binangonan na malapit siya sa may cliff, no? malapit siya sa may bangin. And meron kaming nakitang napala, napakalaking bato doon. Okay, feeling ko kahit dalawampung lalaki ang dalawampung macho okay, ang tumulak ng bato, hindi gagalaw yun. Ano? So parang naalala ko nung binabasa ko to parang ganun yung itsura ng boulder. No? It's a solid piece or a solid massive rock that's immovable. Okay? And if you go back to what Jesus was saying, kung ipaparaphrase mo yan, you are small pebble and on this immovable rock, I will build my church. Parang ganun yung gustong sabihin ngayon ni Jesus sa mga disciples niya. The rock was big enough to serve as the chief cornerstone or the foundation of the church. It was large, it's strong, and it is immovable. Okay? Na pwede mong patungan at gawing pundasyon. It basically, ito yung gustong sabihin ni Jesus and that is Jesus Himself, the foundation of the church. Jesus is the foundation rock on which the church is built. And the church, as some religious people might simply interpret, si Peter daw foundation. Pero kung titignan natin, even Peter, when he wrote his two epistles or letters, itong sabi niya, okay? He did not consider himself rock, okay? The rock on which the church was founded. But look at 1 Peter 2, verse 4 and 5. In the Amplified Translation, sabi niya rito, Come to Him, the risen Lord, as to a living stone, with a capital S, referring to Himself, referring to, to Jesus, which man rejected and threw away, but which is choice and precious in the sight of God. People may have rejected Jesus the first time He came. That's why He was arrested. He was punished and he was crucified on the cross and he died a gruesome death there. But then in verse 5, it says, you believers, okay, look at the person seated beside you, okay? That's a living stone. Buhay ba yan? Gising ba? Pag medyo pipikit-pikit ng konti, gising mo. Tapikin mo lang. You believers, like living stones, are being built up into a spiritual house for a holy and dedicated priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable and pleasing to God through Jesus Christ. In short, what was Peter saying here? Peter was saying that the people of God are the living stones and we're all interconnected to this living stones with a capital S. Living stone, I mean, with a capital S. Jesus. Jesus is the foundation the chief cornerstone on which the church is built on. Okay? He was making a bold statement by saying this text. No? The Apostle Paul reinforced and supported that, basically, yung sinasabi ni Peter. No? And he wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, again, in the Amplified Translation, sabi dito, for no one can lay a foundation other than the one which is already laid, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the founder of the church. Jesus is the foundation of the church. Okay? Where is our faith founded? Ganda nung sinasabi ni Pastor James kanina nung nag-pray siya, di ba? When we were singing, Jesus is at the center, we're basically declaring, Lord, ang buhay namin, sa'yo umiikot. And if you're gonna rephrase that, saan ba nakaangkla ang pananampalataya natin? Okay? Sa pandemic, maraming na-reveal sa buhay natin. Right? 
especially when you're uh, during those times when we're you know locked up at home, di tayo makalabas kasama natin ng mga tao sa bahay na hindi natin normally sanay kasama 10 hours, 8 hours, 12 hours a day, naglalabasan, di ba, yung mga attitude natin minsan because hindi tayo sanay. But then again, the question is, okay, where is our faith founded? Is it on a religion handed down to you by your ancestors? Where is your faith founded? Is it in Jesus alone? Is He our cornerstone? Jesus is the founder of the church. The second non-negotiable belief, Jesus is the builder of the church. Not only is He the founder, He's the builder of the church. Verse 18, I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church. The Greek word is ecclesia. It's a combination of ek, meaning out, in kaleo, meaning called. So, pag pinagsama mo siya, called out. Okay? Ecclesia can refer to any assembly, but at least in this case, Jesus was talking about an assembly of believers, the church. Jesus is the builder of the church. We are that church. You look at, at the person beside you, the one in front of you, the back of you, that is church. Okay? We don't say, I go to church, okay? Because we're not going... Uh, you know, hindi naman tayo building lang na physical building eh. But we're talking about the people of God gathering together, for example, in, in a place like this so we can worship God, we can encourage one another, and we can study God's Word together and we can minister and build one another's faith. I understand the last two years, um, on-site worship services was not regular. I think in the last two and a half years, this has been the longest time that we've had an on-site worship service. Ito na yung fifth straight month na nakapag-on-site tayo. And how many of you are glad? Five straight months, praise God, na nak- finally nakapag-on-site tayo. And reality is, if you look at the full capacity of our place, kayang-kaya natin mag-fit in ng 850 people. Maybe at this point, we're about 270. We're probably just occupying one-third of the space in this place. And yung mga bakanting upuan na nakikita nyo, alam mo kung sinong uupo dyan? Guess what? That could be your parents. That could be your siblings. That could be your office mate. That could be the very people na araw-araw mong nakikita, nakausap online, nakausap physical, and nakareserba sa kanila yan. Okay? Nakareserba yan. We are the church, you and I, we're the church, and wherever we go, because we're the church, we bring the message of the gospel to them as well. No? You see, the church is not a matter of going okay, and attending in a church building, but it's a matter of being. Okay? We are the church. And because we're the church, ang tanong, do we let Jesus build us? Do we let His Word okay? fill our minds and our hearts. Is God's Word the standard of our life? Whenever we go to work, whenever we do our business, whatever we do, ito ba yung, ano natin, ito ba yung uh, binabasa natin, minimeditate natin? At, syempre, pinakamahalaga sa lahat na isasabuhay ba natin? Okay? I hope the Word of God would dwell richly in our lives, no? Importante pang isa na sinasabi nga, 1 Peter 2 verse 5, do we interconnect with other believers? Are we relationally interconnected with fellow believers? Or you walk alone in your spiritual journey? You see, 1 Peter 2 5, balikan natin. This was Peter uh, writing this, you believers like living stones are being built up into a spiritual house for a holy and dedicated priesthood. Ang tanong, sino yung nagbi-build up sa'yo at sino yung bini-build up mo? Sino yung relationally connected ka kaya? Yun yung magandang tanong. Okay? Who are you connected with today? If you're a follower of Christ, I hope we're not walking solo. I mentioned this last week, but I hope we walk with someone and we walk with people of God who will build our faith as well. 2022 marks my 30 years as a Christian. I got saved when I was 15. 
And yung iba sa inyo, nagka-calculate. Ay, ilang taon na si Pastor. <laughs> I was 15 when I got born again. And it would be difficult for me to grow in my relationship with God if I walk alone. I remember um, when we were still small, uh, a church, no? Sa so U-Belt tayo. We were still in Recto. And uh, madalas, uh, ang service noon, 4 o'clock. Okay, so medyo gitna ng 3 and 5, no? So masarap matulog noong mga panahon na yun. <laughs> Masarap matulog, walang aircon, uh, ceiling, fan lang. And ang paborito kong spot, sa totoo lang, yung nasa dulo. Okay, kasi malapit siya sa glass door. Para pagka nag-amen na si pastor, aalis na ako, uwi na ako. Kasi magko-commute pa ako, sasakay pa ako ng da- isang jeep going to Sampalok, no? nakatira kami sa Sampalok. Until one time, uh, I was high school, I was entering fourth year, and there was a second year student who approached me, no, um, Maaga akong dumating noon. Siguro mga 2 o'clock ng hapon ako dumating kasi sumabay ako sa kuya ko. Uh, my brother, uh, my older brother was an usher and nag-head siya ng ushering at that time. So, wala akong ginagawa. Wala namang cellphone dati. <laughs> Ngayon kasi pag naghihintay ka, nagsusunod ka ng oras, naglalaro ka muna ng Mobile Legends. Diba? Nag, kung bata-bata ka, nag-Genshin Impact ka siguro. Walang mga ganun dati. So, nandun lang ako, nakatunga nga ako ng 2 o'clock. No? May lumapit sa akin. Tapos nakapagkilala. Tapos, in-invite niya ako sa small group. We were high school. Sabi niya, may high school uh, meeting kami every Saturday. And uh, sabi ko, subukan ko kaya. Okay, doon ako nagsimula. Sinubukan ko mag-Saturday. And that's where I got connected to my first, to a first victory group. No? Yung kauna-unang victory group na sinalihan ko. And that's where I met some of the people uh, my age. And there were, there were two college students from Mapua at that time who uh, I got to know, at sila na yung tumulong sa akin to grow in my relationship with God. They taught me how to read the Bible, and every time we meet on a Saturday and on a Sunday, they would always ask me without fail, nagbasa ka na ba ng Bible mo? Nagpray ka na ba? Anong binasa mo kahapon? Anong binasa mo kanina? Mukhang, mukhang intrusive sa simula. But I realized, as I look back, hindi naman pala talaga intrusive kasi they, they care for me. They want me to grow in my relationship with God. That's why they ask me those questions. But as I continue to grow in my relationship with God, hindi na nila masyadong tinatanong yun, not because they don't care anymore, but because they realize, ay, naging second nature na naging bahagi na ng buhay niya magbasa. Ang next na tinatanong na niya, pero sinong, sinong dinidisciple mo ngayon? Sinong tinutulungan mo makakilala na kay Lord? Ganun na, nag-progress. And as I grow, okay, in age, as I moved to college and eventually to single and eventually married life, God connected me to more people. Different types of people in different seasons to help me grow in my journey as a Christian. Ang tanong, kanino ka connected? Yun yung magandang tanong ngayon. I hope it's not just every Sunday that you will show up in church. But as you come to church, even during the week, there would be, hindi kailangan 20, 30, isang daang tao. Diba sa Facebook, you probably have 5,000 friends. Pero sa totoo lang, sa liman libo, ilang baro ng kausap mo araw-araw? Liman libo ba kausap mo? Liman libo ba ka-chat mo? Kamusta kayo lahat? Iniisa-isa mo ba yun? Sa group chat nga, hindi mo nga sinasagot. Diba, sinisin zone mo lang eh, diba? May Viber group ka pa, may Telegram ka pa, may Twitter ka pa, may Instagram ka pa. Ang dami mong minementain, pero hindi mo naman lahat sinasagot. Probably, sa isang araw, ang kausap mo lang, ang kakonek mo lang, maybe tatlo, apat, lima, di ba? Ito lang yung, in, in reality, in our walk of faith, you just need a few people who know you and who can really pray with you, who can stand with you in the different seasons of life. I hope we do the same. Jesus is the builder of the church. You see, the church Jesus is building Wala siyang boundary. Walang restrictions. At wala rin namang sinasabing dapat ganitong age lang. Dapat yung buhok hanggang lupa lang sumasaya. Hindi naman eh. O kaya dapat ganito suot niya. <laughs> wala namang ganun. You look at Galatians 3 verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Jesus destroyed the barrier brought about by sin. 
And when we are in Christ, regardless kung Ilocano ka, Bisaya ka, taga Mindanao ka, saan ka paman galing, we become one because of our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, number three, Jesus is the defender of the church. Jesus is the defender of the church. Verse 18, I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You see, Jesus offered a promise here. And a promise niya? The forces of death and darkness won't prevail against us and won't conquer the church. This is a powerful promise. At this time when people are gro- going through, you know, certain difficulty. You see, in ancient times, ano ba ibig sabihin ng gate? A gate or gates, okay, they represent authority and power. The city gate can be similar to the city hall today. Okay? Important government or business transactions were done in uh, gates no, of the city in ancient times. Okay? And this would mean the gates of Hades, in other translation, or the gates of hell, would refer to the organized power of Satan and his minions. And Jesus was basically saying, the power of the enemy okay, is, has no match to his church. Why? Because Jesus is the defender of his church. Hebrews 2 verse 14, sabi rito, Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. You know, when I was reading this text again and again, it may, I know, na-imagine ko lang, it's, it was like Jesus storming the gates of hell. At alam mo nang ginawa niya, when he stormed the gates of hell, he plucked us out of darkness. He took me, he took Jeff, okay? He took all of us one at a time and pulled us out of danger. Out of eternal, you know, destruction. Because apart from Christ, we remain dead in our sin. And we have no power to change ourselves. I'm sure you tried changing your ways, you tried, you tried to change your habits in the past, but have you succeeded? Meron ba succeed sa atin? Ayoko na magmura, hindi na ako magungupit, hindi na ako magdanakaw. We all, we probably have said that to ourselves at one point, but we all fail because we're all dead in sin. And we need a Savior, we need Jesus to rescue us from that, you know, sorry, sinful past of ours and give us a new life. Now, the rescue na tayo ni Jesus from the clutches of sin. What do we do next? We come to church, enjoy worship, and be exclusive and just leave our friends behind? No. I hope not. I hope as we enjoy the salvation that God has given us, as we enjoy the grace, the forgiveness, the mercy, we would start going out there and be the church that Jesus desires us to be. A kind of church that is advancing forcefully. A kind of church that would be proactive in sharing the gospel. Proactive in sharing what Christ has done in our lives. To be honest, Kung meron mang binabago si Jesus sa'yo, yan ang magandang panimula na pwede mong ikwento sa kaibigan mo, pwede mong ikwento sa kamag-anak mo, pwede mong ikwento sa kasama mo sa office. Because they cannot refute that. Ikaw mismo ang binago ni Lord. Ikaw mismo yung mag advertise nung ginawa ni Jesus sa buhay mo. Ano ba ginawa ng word ni Lord? Ano ba yung nabasa mo na nababago ka ngayon? Yun ang i-share natin. Matthew 16, 19. Sabi rito, no? I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Keys. Okay? Kanina, rock. Ngayon, susi. Okay? What do you... Ano ba yung use ng susi? Diba? You try to unlock. 
you try to open a door or a gate, right? It's opening the gate, it's opening a door, and it was a metaphor that Jesus used to unlock or open the door for people, okay, who have been enslaved, imprisoned by sin, to be able to enter into His kingdom. You see, when you look at Peter, sa kanya unang sinabi to, God used Peter eventually in the book of Acts to unlock those doors that brought salvation to so many Jews. Acts chapter 2, he preached during the day of Pentecost and 3,000 men were added to the church. Chapter 3, he preached again after healing the, the beggar. Remember that? The, the crippled beggar when they were going up the temple? After preaching to those bystanders, onlookers, meron na namang naging Kristiyano. May nasave na naman. And reality is, just as you experience salvation, forgiveness, God's mercy, God can use you too. You have the keys. God has given it to you through the power of the gospel that as you share it to your family, to your friend, to the people that you are in touch with, they would be set free as well. Tino tino naniniwala kayo. Nagagawin ni God yun. But we have to take the step of faith. We have to make the first move. Sa atin magsisimula, no? You don't have to be afraid. Naku, baka i-reject ako. Naku, baka wala naman mangyari dyan. Tandaan natin, Jesus is the defender of the church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell will not prevail against what Jesus has already founded and built. Jesus founded His church. He built it. He will defend His church. That's why we can move forward. We can advance. The kingdom of God can advance. Bila mga Kristiyano, we're not called to battle politicians, not political groups, not, you know, fight against people with different ideologies. Ano ba ang tinawag ni Lord sa atin? Jesus has called us to engage a cosmic spiritual battle against the enemy and declare His victory. Reinforce the victory that Jesus has accomplished on the cross. One at a time, as you step out in faith. Naniniwala ako, no? Second half of the year. And I'm gonna believe with you. Sino sa inyo, you're praying for your parents, salvation for your parents. Can you raise your hands? We're gonna pray for that later on. Sino sa inyo, siblings mo, family members, family members, gusto mo makilala si Lord, tagal ko nang pinagpe-pray. Alam mo, itong mga bakanting upuan na to, dyan sila uupo. Someday, they'll be in that spot worshiping the Lord. Do you believe that? I want to tell you, when I was in recto, sinabi ni, every time we pray for family members, one of our pastors would always declare that, and I would say, God, someday, my dad, someday, my mom. And true enough, years after, they surrendered their lives to Christ. I think they're watching. My dad and mom are watching right now. Hello po, ma. <laughs> years of prayer, years of fasting. Now they are Christians. Now they read their Bible. And I want to tell you, that's not impossible for you. Kung, anong, kung sino man ang pinagpe-prayan mo, mangyayari yan. But you have to take a step of faith. Okay? We have a battle at hand that Jesus already won because He said He's going to defend His church. He founded the church. He's the builder of the church. Balikan natin. Matthew 16, 18, as I wrap things up. I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Is Jesus the foundation of your faith? Sino ba si Jesus para sa'yo? I hope he's, I hope your life is built on him. And I pray that as we Move forward to a brand new week. Our faith will be anchored on Him alone, built on Him alone, knowing that Christ has built it and He will lead us. Let's all pray. Let's all stand up. We're going to take time to worship the Lord. We're going to declare who He is in our lives.
Let's all bow our heads and pray. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, thank you, Lord. For when you said, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome. When you said that powerful statement, you're declaring before the lifeless gods in Caesarea Philippi that there's only one God who's alive. You may have died on a cross, maybe weeks or a month after that statement was made, but you rose from the grave, dealing the ultimate defeat over sin and death and giving life to each one of us. Today, as we come into a time of worship, Lord, we lay our hearts bare before you. And declare once again that Jesus, you're the center. You're not the side issue anymore. You're the center of our life. We worship you today. Nothing else matters. Nothing in this world.
Jesus. Let's all bow our heads. Thank you, Jesus. You know, as we were worshiping, maybe God is speaking to you today. Maybe He's not yet the center of your life. Probably, wala siya sa gitna, hindi aligned ang buhay mo. You may have plenty. Your life might be good. But it doesn't mean that Jesus is at the center. And probably today, God is speaking to you today. That you make a decision to make Him the center of your life to make him the, the one where your life is built and found and kung kayo po yun, you've never made a decision to make Christ your Savior your Lord why don't you raise your hands today as a sign of surrender yes I see a hand here anybody else all around all across the room I believe there are many of you who need to make this decision yes I see several hands as you raise your hands as a sign of surrender, can I ask some of our victory group leaders to just stand, stand beside these people? As you raise your hands, there will be people who will stand with you. Living stones, remember that. People who will serve as co-living stones, okay? Who will connect with you. Okay, keep your hands raised. I want to pray for you today. Follow me in the short prayer. Lord Jesus, I admit that I have strayed from the path that you've prepared for me. Do forgive me. I repent from all my sins. Beginning today, Jesus, I declare that you're my Savior and my Lord. Be at the center of my life starting today. Begin your transforming work in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God. Palakpakan po natin si Lord. You know, you know what? Sabi po sa look, no? If one person, okay, repents from his sin, a host of angels are celebrating today. And kung kayo po yun, if you've raised your hands as a surrender, a sign of surrender before the Lord, Gusto ko sabihin sa inyo, congratulations, unang-una po sa lahat. Palakpakan ulit natin sila. Okay? And that's just the starting point. Okay? Kung kayo po, you raise your hands, please, we would like to talk to you for a few minutes. Pastor James would be here in front. You could join us in front for five minutes max. And then we would try to explain to you the decision you made. And after that, we're gonna bless you in prayer. And we hope that that would be the beginning of something very exciting in our spiritual journey. Okay po ba yun? If you raise your hands, abangan po namin kayo rito with Pastor James and let me just close this in prayer, okay? Lord, we thank you. Marami pong salamat for this church community and we thank you for what you're about to do in the coming days. We pray, Father, for strength and wisdom to be upon each person. Lord God, I pray for grace upon grace. And Father, I pray that uh, as we read your word every day, allow your word to dwell richly in us, to bring the peace, the strength, the wisdom that we would need. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, and the church would shout a big, big, Amen and Amen. Praise God.